Well, slowly but surely we're moving forward with the Gunpla project, as you can see. And <clears throat> I will do the second part of the video, um, just modeling out the base for it. Just some sort of a background, or, or not a background, I guess, a foot ground, footprint, ground condition, I don't know, uh, for the model. Um, and I will be using these stones that I've... Um, I already have a tutorial on how to how to create this pattern on, 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 on my YouTube channel. So if you, you're interested in how to do that in Grasshopper, just um, you'll be able to find it. I, I think it was like two videos before this one. And I might as well just uh, put a link in the video description below. But basically what I have here is just a bunch of uh, poly surfaces, a bunch of closed poly surfaces. And I'll be using those as, as some sort of a texture for, for my background. And there are a few things that I need to fix. First one is, if I look at it from the top view, you can see that, um, can you? Well, you can kind of see that. All of these um, stones, they are touching, just slightly touching each other, uh, which is not great because I'll need to join them up to the base plate and when things are just barely touching boolean operations like boolean union boolean difference don't work that well so I need to fix that and to do that, to do that I will use grasshopper and I will reference them in into grasshopper set multiple b reps Oop. all of them just like that Wait for it to have a heart attack because we have way too many B reps. There we go. And then I will just scale them, each one of them. Again, heart attack. This is a very heavy geometry uh, considering that all of these are individual closed poly surfaces. And I'll get their area centroids. Uh, go away. I'll get their area centroids. Again, while what can you do? So now they're going to be scaled around their center points, each one of them. And then for scaling factor, I'll just use something very small, like uh, 0 0.99. So it's 99% of the original, oh, 0 0.99, 99% of the original size. And that's it. Right, I just scale them down just slightly. So let me quickly create a new layer and I'll call this scaled stones. And just to be clear, I'll make that layer blue. And I will bake out the, 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 the scaled version into that layer. So scaled stones, group, yes, please. Okay. And we're done with that. Uh, so now I can close this uh, grasshopper script and I can turn off the default layer or should I just delete the stones altogether? Maybe let's select objects in the default layer. I'll unselect the curve that I have here, but I will delete everything else. So now we have a boundary curve and we have a bunch of, a bunch of stones. Uh, to show you them better, I'll just go to Arctic view. That's how they look like. I like it. it. Looks looks fine. Okay, so we have that. That's step number one. Step number two is actually creating a plate or some sort of a volume and merging those stones with the volume, which is going to be very uh, CPU, like computer processing intensive, uh, but not that hard to do. Like, Te technical, uh, technically, not, not that hard to do. So first things first, let's think of a design for this. Um, so this curve is right in the middle of these stones. Do I want it to be slightly down? Perhaps I do. So I'll just move it slightly down, just like that, to get some 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 um, higher 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 um, stones that are sticking out higher from it. So we have something like this that seems fine. 
and then I will offset this curve outwards and hmm, should we scale it first though? Yeah, we should scale everything to a correct size. Wait, I need to check uh, how, how big I need this to be. Wait. Okay, I measured it. It needs to be at least 15. Uh, it needs to be at least 15 centimeters. Um, so, scale from here to here. I will say, <clears throat> let's go for 16. 160 millimeters. Whoa, that's a, that just became real small. <laughs> Okay, and let me just move it to zero, zero, zero. Zoom selected. Okay. So to move something to zero, 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 you just select the whole geometry, type in M, enter, click on the point, and then type in zero, and it just kind of snaps to the um, to the zero, uh, zero, zero, zero coordinates of the world. Okay, so we have that going on. And that is 150 millimeters here. My printer can handle 190 millimeters, something like that. So I can kind of, let's do an offset of 100 and, no, sorry, of, of, of like a centimeter. A centimeter is a bit too much. Let's do an offset of five millimeters. Something like this, okay. And I'll just call it planner surface. There we go. Okay, so we have that. So all of these stones will need to merge with uh, with the surface here. But to do that, we need it to be kind of a thick boy, right? We we need it to have a volume. So now let's let's think about this. How do we make it nice? Um, I will offset it once more by a centimeter this time and how big is it now distance from here to here we have 190 millimeters that's a little bit too much that's that's getting to the dangerous zone so I'll offset it by five millimeters instead yeah that should be okay so we have that going on and I will Let's think. Should I move this? Yeah, let's move it up. So I will move this up, or co rather copy this up. By how much? By how much? By how much? Uh, one centimeter? Mm, that's a bit too much. So minus five millimeters. I just want the stones to stick out. Okay. And now we make this kind of a lip. Loft this like that. Loft this like that. And I will move this down by minus five again to something like that. And loft this as well. Okay, so we end up having something like that. That's that's already starting to look pretty nice. And should we... Ah, screw it. Uh, let's not loft it, but rather in uh, front view. Zoom selected, ZS. I'll move it this down by minus five millimeters again. Is that fine? Do we want it to be thicker? How thick does it look? Yeah, that's pretty thick. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's have it like that. Okay, so I'll loft between these two curves like that. Join everything up, cap, <clears throat> and we have a box, you know, no nothing special. And now let's make it a bit nicer. 
So first things first, I don't like the inner corners here. So should I fillet or chamfer them? Maybe fillet. No, chamfer. How does this? This is kind of a. It's not rounded. So I will chamfer these corners. Chamfer edge, and I will say five millimeter chamfer. Yeah, that seems to be okay. Okay. Let's have a five millimeter chamfer all throughout this whole shebang. And for the outside, I kind of want it to be sharp because then I can stack uh, these plates next to each other if, if I do more of them and they will look nice. So I'll, I'll keep it as it is for the outside. And let me actually merge all faces to get rid of all, any unnecessary parts. What the heck? Extract surface. Oh, you're a curve. Okay, that's a curve. Delete. <laughs> okay, so we have that going on. And now for the bottom, chamfer edge, five, 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 five millimeters of chamfer. Should we do more? We should do more, right? Uh, let's say a centimeter of chamfer. Mm. It's kind of elegant, but uh, maybe let's try with eight millimeters. Maybe that's going to be the, the answer that we're after. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Eight millimeters. And then let me just do a really small, like one millimeter chamfer on these edges, even though I don't want them to be sharp. Or actually, maybe we should fillet edge by one millimeter. Yeah. Even though I don't want them to be, uh, I, I want them to be kind of sharp. But printer wise, it's always nicer to, um, to slice this model uh, when you're slicing the model, not to have it do any really sharp turns. And this will prevent it from doing that. This is just to get the best, um, the, the, the best uh, quality. Okay, so we have that going. Should I keep the sharp edge here? Yeah, probably. Okay, and we have some stones here and I'll, I'll color it in a nice way. Uh, so, so that should be nice. Okay, uh, stones. Let's see, unlock, uh, uh, ungroup. And I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not, but let's try. Let's see this guy, you, you're going to be my test. Uh, Boolean union. The stone with this box. Booleans perfectly. Okay. What about this group? Boolean union. Nice. I'll type in what to just check if it's making any mistakes. It's not. Okay, that's good. And I like to, oops, uh, Boolean union. I like to do Booleans like these in parts because then I know if, if, if it says Boolean union failed, I know which part um, is failing. Continue on doing Boolean union. The further we go, the slower it's going to get, which is fine. Okay, that's, that's done. Continue. Should I speed this up? Nah, let's let's push through this together uh, like that. It's it's not too many. So the reason why I'm not just um, doing two separate sets of geometries is because Slicer really doesn't like it when you give it uh, separate meshes. Uh, slicer, by slicer I mean uh, 3D slicing software for uh, 3D printing. Uh, it really hates it when you... Should we just 
yeah, let me just join everything here and kind of talk about it. So slicers such as Cura or uh, Slicer 3D or, or how is it called? By Prusa, Prusa slicer, whatever. All of these uh, 3D slicers for, for, for FDM printers or SLA printers, doesn't matter. Um, they really don't like when you have intersecting meshes. And the way they are going to deal with that is they're going to say that, okay, if you have two intersecting meshes, one of them is carving out from the other, right? And it's going to start making this perimeter uh, curves where they shouldn't be, and your print times will go up dramatically, and also the prints themselves will become weaker. So if you can mitigate that, I would definitely suggest that you uh, you join up your, your meshes before slicing, or in this case, poly surfaces. Okay, um, I just hidden the, the, the poly surface just to double check if everything is in order and everything seems to be in order. And now if I go to Arctic view, that's what we have. We have a stone garden for our robot. <clears throat> okay, next thing uh, is to... So the, 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 the pictures that I took of, of, of the footprint where the robot actually touches the, the, the ground were actually for this particular purpose. Um, I need, I can't just pluck the, the robot onto the Gundam on, the, uh, on this pattern because it wouldn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, I needed to, I need some islands here without any pattern to, to actually uh, put them all in nicely. So I took a picture and I will import it import it uh, by typing in picture and choosing that picture right here and for now I don't care about the size so I've just imported a surface that has a it's basically just it, it basically just makes a surface that has a um, picture texture attached to it and then I'll go to top view zoom selected like that and I will scale up um, this picture to this um, to this dimension right here. Maybe I should have used the bigger dimension because this will be within the margin of error. Like the, the, the bigger dimension you use here, the less error you will have. Yeah, give me a second. I will come back in a bit. Okay, we're back. So I took another picture. Let's get rid of this one. Uh, type in picture again. And this time it's uh, rotated, but that's fine. So it is something like that. And between these two points, this point right here and this point right here, we have 132 millimeters, oh, well, 0.11. So I will just scale and I will click on this point and then I will turn off ortho snap for, because it's on for some reason. Um, and I'll click on this point and I'll just type in what's the actual distance between these two points. And that's 132.11. Enter. There we go. So now it's scaled correctly. And then I can just lock this guy in place and draw some curves on top of it. So I will... I need to remember. So this one was like that, that like that. Maybe I should draw and let me create a new layer and call it red lines just so that you can see better red lines. Let's try again. Uh, that, 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 that. Um, sure, let's do it like that that and these two guys need to join up so I'll just fillet them together with radius of zero from here to here 
Okay, so we have the footprint here. Then I will need to cut out this area. So this is just going to be a circle. And then this area right here, I will just use a interpolate curve tool to create this ellipsoid shape right here. I don't need to be very precise uh, in doing this, but I do need everything to be correctly placed, so to say. So let's do something like that. So I need all of the gaps to be correct. Okay, so we have that. And then for margin of error, I will offset everything by two millimeters outwards, just like that just to make sure that everything offsets properly. Delete, 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 delete. And then maybe I should um, also, do we fillet? Yeah, let's fillet corners by one millimeter just to smooth things out a bit for, for these two footprints. So the, the, the tool is called fillet corners. I will take these guys, group them together, group, so that uh, they don't, I don't accidentally move them away. And I will just move them somewhere, right? So this is the front foot right here, and this is the, uh, the knee and the back foot, and this is uh, back of a skirt or something like that. Okay, so front foot, so this is how it's going to be um, facing us, uh, like that. So that would be the front foot going on here, knee, and then you have the spiky boys, and then I could do something there. Mm, yeah, actually, yeah, I will not be doing anything else with this, um, like rotating or anything like that. I think the orientation is actually pretty good. Okay, so now we need to carve out these stones. And I will do that very easily by just ex, um, extruding, extruding these curves downwards with solid set, uh, set to be yes. And I'll just extrude them until they reach the ground plane, so to say, this plane right here, just like that. That should do the trick. Okay, and then we can again do boolean. Uh, actually, let me just have these um, just just to be on the safe side. I'll just take these and I will copy them to. Um, or let me call this B4 Boolean. Just if, you know, if this doesn't work out, then I can come back to this 3D model and change, the, change it. So I'll just take everything that I have here and, uh, and copy objects to layer. So now I have all of the objects in B4 Boolean. I'll select them, move them to the side. Here they are. and. For now, I'll just hide that layer. Okay, so now let's do Boolean difference. Boolean difference, carve out these four guys from our plate. And now we wait for 50 years until it's done. Everyone start checking their phones. <laughs> There we go. So now it's it's alive. And do I need this? I don't need this anymore. Unlock, selected, this guy, <clears throat> hit delete. Now it's gone. Okay, so we have some form of a base plate here. Let's go for Arctic view. Let's see if how messed up it is. It's not that messed up. I like how it looks. Yeah, those those are nice. Uh, shade that view. And 
so so the orientation is going to be like that do we want to add anything else to this perhaps we do let me um quickly hmm, how do we do this fast um file import yeah sure let's go for file import do i have anything here no let's go to youtube files and find the newest one that's for printing that's vip let's import the vip one here and oof that's that's a, that's a yikes that's a yikes but I only care about this cylinder actually. So let me unlock everything and hide scaled stones. Gunpla base helper. Okay, so these two are locked. Everything else I just control A. Actually, let's show it as well. Yeah, that's as, as expected. I have a lot of trash here. So let me do control A and then just unselect one of these cylinders here that we have. Let me unselect this one for instance. Or do we have anything? Eh, that's fine. Yeah, sure. So that cylinder right there delete <clears throat> and i only care about this cylinder right here all right and i'll explain what i'm doing in just a second so give me give me a second um now we have a lot of uh, unnecessary layers here so i'll just type in uh, purge p-u-r-g-e purge and layers set to yes, hit enter, it purges everything, and now I have only what I need, the cylinders layer here. Okay, so there are some cylinders sticking out of my Gunpla robot, right? I want some of them to be uh, placed in the, in the ground as well. So let me rotate them, and I don't need them to be... Um, I don't need them to be uh, da, 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 da. sorry I'm, I'm I don't need them to be vertical completely vertical and I don't need them to be this uh, the correct size so I will have um, let's say two of them that are correct size and more like let's say three of them that are going to be 1.5 times bigger Ooh, let's let me just bounding box um, let me just check the approximate dimension of these will my printer handle them yeah, yeah sure 10 centimeters, that's that's fine. Okay, so we have five in total, and now I'll make some some arrangements for them. So foot goes there. So basically our whole composition is sideways. So that means I I will put some here and I will put some here. So there, 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 something like that. And let me have them stick out a bit and now let me just move this one here and maybe this one is here and this one is somewhere here and now can you rotate like a normal oh my god um, align to C plane Seaplane is not that. What do you mean? Uh, Seaplane's world top. S still not aligning, huh? Okay. 
align to object sure whatever um and then i just rotate this guy like that that is perfect push push him in this one is also not aligned align to object please there we go okay so these guys will make a cross like this and this one is sticking out a bit so i'll make sure that it's not uh even less less there okay so that is good maybe inwards a bit i can't see ah there we go so that's fine that's also fine and this one needs to just be placed here like that maybe i'm just doing a quick composition or is it no it's not like that maybe this x is a bit too much uh, let's do something like that and then we'll have these is 1.5 too much scaling wise maybe we'll see or maybe they need to be a little, a little bit more horizontal so let's try that so this guy goes like that and this one this one can be like a beam going like that and this one goes in like that no no that's an x is bad so let's try that oh and they are intersecting no 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 so you can't intersect you need to fit nicely so this is the i know it's it's kind of boring to watch but it's i i believe it's a very important part of of any kind of a um th this kind of model making it's what kind of composition do you do you want to do and here maybe we also want to rotate oh it doesn't rotate it doesn't want to rotate gumball align to c plane now will you rotate now you will okay so you're rotating like that mm -hmm. that is good and you need to rotate out like that and you will not rotate you will just do your thing yeah that's not bad is it some sort of a cool uh, yeah sure and then uh, two more so these guys i will definitely want these two to be horizontal uh that is not how you make them horizontal <laughs> Um, why is my gumball all messed up? Oh, it seems to be fine. Okay. So that and that. And now I will just, in top view, I'll just move them to the correct, uh, correct position. Just like that. And do they follow the... Yeah, they should probably follow the curvature of the stones. Mm -hmm. so one is doing that its thing and the other one will be doing that like this move it down move it down some more so i want this one to be resting on top of the edge here so I'll just rotate, rotate it a little bit forward, a little bit more, something like this. But now that intersection is super awkward. So let me um, 
move it like that move it like that and move it up rotate it a bit back move it down how is it now yeah uh that's good ah, but it's intersecting here no come on a little bit a little bit more a little bit up there we go that that should do the trick and now just i will move it up by 0 0.2 millimeters just so that it doesn't mess up my nice edge here and now for this one it's kind of the same story right or maybe this one can just do do its thing like so yeah that that seems fine and then just to be safe minus 0 0.2 millimeters okay ah uh, I bet we can just delete that that part off and that's that's gonna be fine all right so we have a few sticks there a few sticks there do we want these maybe these are a bit i don't know i'm not sure about these maybe we want it to be clean cleaner What if we get rid of one? No. How about this? Sure. Two and two. And then a row button in, in the middle. Frames the view, kind of guides the view. Yeah, let's do it like that. So sorry for blabbing, but uh, now we finally finished up with this part. Let me copy these guys right here again uh, i'm not sure if i copied them properly so i'll do that again copy from uh, let's say this midpoint to this midpoint like that and i'll just change object layer for these guys and now let's do boolean difference so we're going to subtract from oh yeah unlock we're going to subtract from this enter this time we will not delete the input so delete input is no and we will subtract with these four pipes right here wait wait oh man this is so heavy <laughs> Maybe I should open up Cura while we're while we're waiting. There we go. So now it's done and Cura is opening. That's good. And now let me hide the cylinder layer and let me hmm, let me actually do this. Select everything here. And you can see two poly surfaces added to selection, meaning that there is a small bit that's flying away somewhere. Here after the boolean and holding down the control key I unselect and now I can see that it's this guy is the culprit here and I'll just delete him okay so one of the uh, cylinders will sit here the other one will sit there one will I will need to glue it in won't I yeah one of them will need to be glued in here and the other one will need to be glued in here but that's Fine, we can glue things, that's A-OK. -okay. So now, time to mesh it. Mesh. Uh, fewer polygons or more polygons? What about average amount of polygons? Let's wait for this to get meshed. This is already, Cure is already prepared layer height uh, we'll need to work with this initial layer height that's fine flow rate 150 what the heck why did i use all oh, right that was for the vase that we did um, no flow rate 100 so now i'm just going through the settings in cura 15 percent no that's definitely too much 12 uh cubic sure cubic is fine 
shell wall line count do we need three walls no we don't we will not be shaving off too much from them so that's fine speed 50 yeah let's go for 50 i could go 60 but uh, printer is not doing that well right now i need to actually do some maintenance on it so let's do 50 um all of that is fine support yeah we won't need any supports there cooling uh minimum layer time 10 seconds that's good fan speed 30 percent i have insane fans there like two really heavy duty blower fans so 30 percent is actually fine maybe we can even go as low as Let's do 20% or will it just mess up? Now let's do 30 because we do have some chamfers here and there. Built plate adhesion, yeah, definitely skirt. Dual extrusion, I don't have any. And here we don't have any. Okay, um, ooh, can we do experimental layers? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see um, how much we win. Uh, with experimental layers, uh, with adaptive layers. So for now, uh, there we go, mesh is done and it has <laughs> 300,000 polygons, uh, which is, yep, that's, that's what you get. Yep, sounds about right. And for some reason it moves in a very weird angle. So let me do align to world. There we go. And this should all be correct scale. Uh, the, the, the what? Closed. Okay, check. Let's check the mesh as well. Non manifold edges. Uh, uh, duplicate face. Ah, uh, uh, fuck. Okay. Let's fix it. Um. Uh, edge uh, how is that called show edges show edges non manifold edges zoom what the oh that's that's where the problem is and i have no idea what i'm looking at it's somewhere in the middle of the stones of course it is why wouldn't it be uh now i can't zoom to it anymore is there a way on how we can fix this? I have no idea what I'm looking at. Wait, let us do, actually, can I, can I, can I, can I, um, having this duplicate edge, just duplicate that edge. Okay, so now we know where it is at least. And I will use clipping plane. Oh, uh, before I do that, I need to hide this because it will just straight up crash. Uh, clipping plane. Okay. Let's do that. And now let's find where our curve is. There it is. And let us move our, no, 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 not the curve, not the curve, the clipping plane. Let's move the clipping plane until somewhere here, I guess. Do we still see the curve? Yes, we do. And it's right here. Ah, okay. So that's where it is. Okay, 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 okay. Got that um understood and that's because these two stones are intersecting ah yikes okay we need to solve that um show show edges again zoom in that's the culprit hmm. can i turn off uh clipping plane settings show fills turn that one off how is that a that is not a non-manifold edge 
Is that because of this point? Oops. That is because of this point, isn't it? Okay, we can fix that. If I select this and do F10, four points on, and I grab this point right here, zoom selected. If I grab this point right here, I can move it back just a tiny amount. Ooh, that's not gonna work. Ooh, that's gonna be a boo-boo. Or maybe. Hmm. Okay, let's let's try one one thing though. Let's try one thing, and that is align mesh vertices. If we get rid of all of these duplicate points here, I think it's going to fix it. Yeah, I have a pretty good, good, good. I think it's a pretty good chance that getting rid of duplicate points will also make it not register non-manifold edges. And it's crashing. Let me pause the video until it, uh, it, it, it finishes doing its thing and then we'll continue. Okay, so that didn't work, but now I've extracted uh, these only this area which which uh, is messing up and I will try and fix fix it the old school way so I will just move these points away from each other wait are you a freaking polygon there you are aren't you can I can I get rid of you we'll see uh, so for now, let us do uh, delete mesh faces, delete mesh faces. Let's do that and select the mesh face and select that. So we have this ugly, ugly mesh face here. I'll get rid of it or oh, enter and then Fn, F10, well in your case it might just be F10. I will move All right, we are back and I fixed it and it was painful, but now this, if I type in check, this is actually, yeah, that's fine. Intersecting faces, that's fine. Uh, but everything else is fine. So now I can just use unify mesh normals and that should yeah, whatever. Um, let me export this STL to my desktop and call it SSSSTL Gunpla Base. Uh, yeah, sure. Gunpla Base. Save. 17 megabytes, sure. Uh, export open objects, nah. Okay. And then let's find it. Where are you? Where are you? There it is. I'll just drag and drop it in <clears throat> just like that. Ooh, well, it does fit. It does fit. And let's slice it up. Let's just see how, how it how it's going to behave. 14 hours. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I will need to wait a bit. Oh, and it's making mistakes. So this is welcome to Cura. I don't know what happened, but Cura seems. Okay, I am stupid. So 
the reason why we got all of those bugs was because I had Spiralize Outer Contour turned on for this guy right here and now it's 17 hours instead of 14 uh, with Spiralize Outer Contours turned off but now everything uh, should be working properly I'll say initial layer height is 0.3 and layer height is 0.2 millimeters for this bad boy here should um, that should be good enough do the thing yeah jesus 19 hours better start printing now huh let's just quickly look at um line type mm -hmm. when you're doing a print like this you definitely want to make sure that um, there are no sorry that there are no issues with with your with your G code before you run the print will it overhang in three layers though like here That whole part will definitely mess up. Maybe we should do more. Ah, screw it. Let's let's try. What, what what's the worst that can happen? Um. So let me grab a SD card. There we go my trusted sd card let's plug it in there we go and let's save the removable drive checked and that is that so we are getting there with this one and those cylinders printed out we will not be doing any more geometry now it's all going to be about sanding and priming and painting and making it nice so all remaining all remaining videos in these series are going to be much more analog so to say less digital so uh, we will be making the model look pretty cool I hope. So I hope you learned something new with this one and enjoyed it and I will see you in a few days with the next one. Later!